Uh, Via tells about Eric Zimney, our guest one more time. You remember Eric from our segment last week when we were talking about the second leg of the Triple Crown, the Preakness. And Eric, you flat out said Mage would not repeat in the Preakness. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, I think when I was on last week, there was a horse named First Mission who was still in the race. He wound up scratching out um, due to injury. And when he did, the race became just even uh, more paceless than it already was. And so it was kind of pretty evident that halfway through, Mage was going to be up against it. Um, and now that's the way it played out. The horse, uh, National Treasure, took the lead and went very slow early on. And because of that, you know, had enough energy to finish up pretty strongly and, and got the job done. Did National Treasure, I watched the race, but I, I seem to remember National Treasure going wire to wire. Is that the case? Yeah, he did. And, you know, just like, uh, as you could kind of imagine, when the horses go slower early on, they're going to have more energy at the end. And he was on the, the front the whole way, went wire to wire, and because they'd gone so slow early on, it takes a lot of the punch out of the closers, uh, closing kicks, because there's still more energy to be had by those horses who have run slow early on up front. And, you know, he had the advantage all his way, and then, you know, tactically the race just set up very, very well for him um, and not so well for Mage. But Mage, Mage he'll, he'll live to fight another day, and uh, I'm sure you'll see him again later this summer. We failed to talk about Bob Baffert's return last week, Eric, and uh, there he was once again at the end of the race, standing there looking good. Yeah, you know, it's, it was it was weird. He uh, had won seven Preaknesses going into Saturday, and, and the seven winners he had were five derby, five horses who had won the derby, and the other two were horses who were favorites in the derby. Uh, this horse hadn't run in the derby, so he was kind of the antithesis of the, the profile, the horse that Baffert had had coming into this race when he'd had success. Um, you know, he'd run a bunch of horses in the Preakness who hadn't run in the Derby, and none of them had really run well, and this one bucked that trend. But like I said, I mean, he had everything his way, uh, just the way the race set up. There was no other real speed. There was nothing else that was really going to challenge this horse up front. And, um, you know, Baffert, uh, you know, that's that's eight Preaknesses. That's a, a great accomplishment, no matter how you slice it. Eric, before the race started, they were saying instead of call being called the Preakness, they saying it should be called the race of weakness uh, because of the <laughs> poor field. Did you you did you uh, you agree with that assessment? This year, 100% agree with it. Um, you know, you only had one horse coming out of the Derby, and granted, he was the winner, but. Um, yeah, to me, it was probably as as weak of a field in a Triple Crown race as we've seen. And a lot of that's just, just luck. The horses, uh, you know, who ran two weeks ago didn't want to come back. But I think you'll see a much stronger field in the Belmont. Already looks like it's going to be stronger, even though Mage won't be there. But, um, yeah, look, seven horses in the Preakness, uh, not ideal. I'm sure they would have liked to have more. Um, you know, why that is, you know, a bunch of different theories. But, um yeah, I think you'll see a better race in the Belmont in a few weeks. How does that happen? How do we end up with – what's the process by which a horse becomes part of a race? So, you know, you have conditions for the race. So the Preakness is for horses who are, are three years old, uh, who the trainer will look. And, you know, these horses also have to be nominated to the series of races. So you've got to pay, pay an amount, um, you know, several months ago to nominate to these races. And if the trainer thinks the horse is doing well – uh, you know, and, you know, fits the conditions of the race, wants to run a mile in 316, it's not every horse wants to do that, then you'll you'll enter your horse. And, you know, it's a lot for horses who run in the derby to come back two weeks later. Obviously, 18 of them didn't think it was in their horse's best interest to do that, and the derby winner was the only one who did. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's uh, horses these days, they, they don't run as often as they used to. That's just a fact. Uh, if, you, if you look statistically, that's the way it is. And you never used to really have this problem 20, certainly not 30, 40 years ago. But even, you know, as recently in the last quarter century, this has kind of become a trend. And there was a lot of discussion about moving the timing of the Triple Crown races. We'll see how much traction that gets. A lot of history there you'd be changing. But, you know, definitely something they got to look at. Eric, just before the Derby, three or four horses were pulled or stretched. Uh we're not really sure why. I think in a couple occasions, minor ailments, minor injury. Uh, none of those went to the Preakness, uh, did they? And the question is, why not? So, you know, in horse racing right now, there are a ton of protocols, veterinary-wise, um, you know, to preserve the health of the horse. A horse, Forte, who's the, you might remember, yeah. he was the favorite in the Derby. He got scratched the morning of the Derby. And when that happens, that triggers an automatic 14-day uh, period where the horse can't run in a race. So they were at, 
you know, that horse and, and others, they were actually precluded by regulation from even running in the Preakness if they were withdrawn with an injury two weeks prior. So they're, you know, just part of the protocols that are in place to help protect the horses. Yeah, uh, Forte was one I was thinking of. Mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, yeah, and, he, he was specific to that 14-day window. He was not. Uh, he would not have been able to run by law. Does, did Mage look tired? We have about a minute left, Eric. Did Mage look tired to you in that race, Eric? Yeah, I don't know if he looked tired. I mean, he, again, it, he was up against it. It was going to be hard to run that horse down. The horse has run five times in a brief amount of time. I mean, he hadn't started until early this year. I mean, this was his, you know, he's packed a lot in a short amount of time. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if he was a little bit tired, uh, which is why I think they're going to give him a little bit of a break and regroup for some of the, you know, some of the late summer races like the Travers. You could hear everybody in New York going, no, as Mage did not kick down that home stretch. The Belmont, without the possibility of a triple crown winner, loses a lot of luster. E. It sure does. I think it was a lot more than Belmont because there's a lot of tracks around the country whose crowds grow exponentially when there's a triple crown on the line. But, yeah, not ideal for them. But, look, they're going to have a big day. They've got a bunch of huge stakes races that day. I think it loses more for, for you know, popular culture and, and those kind of, you know, fringe racing fans who may not turn in now, but not ideal. Hey, cool. good stuff. I appreciate you coming in uh, and finishing up the program today, Easy. Good job. Call me, Mar call me Mariano Rivera. I appreciate that. <laughs> he got that cutter. He's got that cutter. Uh, final minute coming up right after these.